Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Can we give God a hand? Can you give me a... Who's up there? Sheila. Amen. Thank you for... If you can give me... Amen. Thank you for that, boss. Y'all go ahead. We go ahead and sing that. Amen. thank you for shifting the atmosphere. Lord God, we thank you for making this atmosphere what you would have it to be so lives can be changed, so minds can be changed, so troubles can be eased, so, so we can receive your word, Lord God, right now as I stand before your people, Lord God, I pray that you transform me. Lord God, anything that has uh, will separate me from you, Lord God. I pray that you take it out of me as I prayed before, Lord God, right now. I pray that you be the words and I understand that I'm just the voice. Lord God, speak through me so you speak ever so clearly so your children will be able to understand. Lord God, not just those that who've already accepted you, but most importantly, those who do not know you in the free pardon of their sins, Lord God, that their lives and their minds may be changed, that they will make a decision to love you, Lord God, to follow you. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you've done, every, everyone that has preceded us, everyone and every gift that, that, that has been presented here, every praise, Lord God. We pray that we have found favor. Lord God, we thank you for every single thing that you do for us. It's truly in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We thank you. 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 You know, uh, uh, Sister <laughs> Dr. Hubbard, we had a conversation what, about two weeks ago. And uh, we were trying to figure out, is it your turn this time? Because we had to go to Fold and the Field Sunday, so we were just trying to figure out who it was. And God had given me a word of, um, in studying it a while back. And, you know, I just, I, it didn't matter to me. I was ready. You know, so... Uh, thinking about it, y'all bear with me about this weather that came through. My, it's got my voice a little in and out, but we're going to work it on out. But first, let me give honor to my pastor, 
head of this church. I give honor to God first, who is indeed the head of my life, to my pastor, to my first lady, to ministers, deacon, I'm finna get to it, to my wife. Amen. Amen. You know, some <laughs> until you get to the point where you're comfortable up here, you try to speed through things sometimes, and sometimes you will forget things. So to my wife, who is always by my side for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. And, you know, it's truly when the Bible says when a man finds the wife, he finds it a good thing. That truly is. That's a, that's a true statement. And when it says it is not good that man should live alone, that is a true statement. Amen. So, you know, those who have found a wife understand that we have hope that we understand that we have found a good thing. You know, um, 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 on Wednesday just past, uh, Sister Kathy, when she was giving her testimony about growing up, you know, it's cool, you know, and she was telling the teenagers, it's cool, it is cool to follow Jesus. Uh, you know, I, I, it was a lot of teenagers, I saw Tyreek, I saw Tremond there, I saw a couple, of Al, um, Alec was there. A lot of Union Springs used to, uh, David, uh, uh, Sister Crystal's son was there. Desmond, thank you. Thank you, Miss Amber, uh, was there. And, you know, just to see them out in that type of environment and worshiping God and just being part of uh, what was going on. It is cool to serve Jesus at a young age. You know, uh, we've said many times, we don't, we, we don't have the all the programs and the singings and stuff that we had when I was growing up, you know. So back in those days, you almost didn't have a choice but to go to church because it was open. The church was open and so much. And if you had a mama like mine, we we I you know me and my brother, we uh we grew up thinking my mother was a member of Plainview when her membership was actually at. Um, New Enon, you know, growing up, I, we was in that, uh, in the, in the era of off and on Sundays, you know, church may go first and third, and this one goes second and fourth, and this one only do first and fifth, but it didn't matter, because every time a church doors was open, we was somewhere. We went from Plainview to New Enon to Springfield to Barrels Grove to Smyrna, even Smyrna looked pretty much wherever W.J. Reed was at, we were right there with him. Amen. But you know, um, it, 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 it got to a point where I, growing up, I probably about a little bit older than Tremont. I was probably about, probably about Chloe's age. I was about 12, 13. And I've said before, you know, I talked to my friends in school and they was uh, what they were doing on the weekends and it was always I was going to church so you know I finally got to a point where I looked my mom in the eye I told her mom I, I, I really don't think I want to go to heaven because if I got to keep going to church all like this and 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 and, and I can't play with my friend I, I think I'd just rather go to hell and she, and she told me well I guess you finna find you somewhere else to stay and then so I knew at that point in time I didn't have a choice but I'm glad that she kept me and my father kept me on the right road. Y'all bet I ain't gonna be here long. And you know, growing, y'all already know that I can talk, I can talk about 20 minutes, get to about 10, and then we out of here. You know, and growing up, um, um, you know, everyone, uh, most people um, know my father's side of the family, the Floyd side of the family. And you know, they know that all of them are singers and that nature. But my mother is honestly where me and my brother got our stage presence and our, our singing from, and you know, because my, uh, my mother used to sing in a uh, plain view, uh, I, I guess you want to call it, so it's kind of, what was it, a women's choir or, or, or just a church choir? And it was a collection of women uh, led by Brother T.C. Carl. And it was my mother and Sister Connie's mother and uh, Sister Katie Fitch, uh, 
Miss Claire Berry, uh, 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 Miss White when that was in there. She was in there. I'm trying to remember all the people there. I don't remember all of them in there, but I grew up, we grew up traveling behind Pastor Reed, and they were singing behind him. So he was in a revival this night, and he was in revival this night. So we were going here, there, everywhere following the word of God. And you know, I'm grateful of what I learned because what I was trained, it didn't leave me. And you know, I, I, I had my times of being out there. JD, I, I didn't want to follow all the rules all the time. You know what I'm saying? I like being out there. But I got to a point that where the training kicked in and it wouldn't allow me to be out there anymore. And you know, when when uh, when when Mama then was traveling, Mama used to, you know, Mama used to love. She, the Holy Spirit blessed her to where she could get to, you know, lean songs. And she sang and she shake her head, do all that. And my Mama used to sing a song, and I'm gonna make an attempt to sing a little bit of it. And you know, uh, song when I was little. When I woke up early this morning, my heart was beating right on time. She said, Lord, I truly thank you. Y'all know this? For opening up these eyes of mine. And I went over to my window. Hold on, hold on. And looking through the shades Once again I had to tell him Thank you Lord For let me see another day And she went on to say Now the sun was bright and shining the wind was blowing not too strong and uh, in a treetop uh, just a few feet away was a robin singing a song I don't know what he was singing uh, but pretty soon he was on his way who could say he wouldn't be in great hateful saying thank you for another day y'all want to sing this part with me now everybody ought to praise his name be grateful and up a little bit. Say everybody ought to Whoa Cause if a Say thank you Oh You ought to Be grateful And uh, mm -hmm. Say everybody ought to Oh, 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 yeah, cause if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. Amen. 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 See, I told y'all I grew up old school. Amen. 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 If you turn with me into your Bibles to the book of John, St. John, amen, the 14th chapter, and first verse, if you'll stand to your feet. St. John, third the 14th chapter, starting reading at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. 
ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may, also, may be also. And whither I go, ye know, ye know, and the way ye know. Verse 5, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. If, if you don't mind letting me have your undivided attention for as long as the Holy Spirit will allow us to stand before you, I want to talk from a subject of this world is not my home. Amen. This world is not my home. Starting in verse 1, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also many in me. I'm given what was going on at the time. This was right after they had just had the Last Supper. And Jesus was communing with the twelve and and he, you know, even before the Last Supper, Jesus had been trying to help the disciples and to understand that I will not be with you always. And, you know, he was trying to show them these things and getting them to believe. And, you know, it was coming time at the Last Supper when he should be betrayed, should, would be betrayed. And, you know... What I like about the part of the Last Supper, you know, Jesus wasn't afraid of what was he had to face on the cross. Because when he gave the sop to Peter, and he was talking, I mean, excuse me, and he gave the sop to Judas, and he said unto Judas, go, quickly, go. Do what you got to do. If you think that the prince of this world, the, 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 the enemy, Satan, is able to destroy me. Go on. Let him come. Let him do what he got to do. But in the meantime, in between time, he was still trying to keep the disciples at peace, knowing that he was, that his crucifixion was on the horizon. So, you know, and he, even with his crucifix on the horizon, he was at that point in time where he don't wash their feet and he and he showed them how to be servants one to another, not, not, not getting to the point where they think that they were bigger and better one over the other. And, you know, and we come to um, this part where he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He just said, let, don't cause fear to come into your heart and trouble you. Now, I, I, I'm not going to be here with you always. I ain't going to be able to get you out of trouble and everything that you do, but, and even the things that I have to go through, don't let it trouble your heart so much that when you think that, oh my God, oh my God, what shall we do? And there is nothing left for me to hope for. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't permit it to enter into your heart. This is a request that Jesus is asking of the disciples. Don't let it happen. Amen. Amen. When you look at your heart, it's one the innermost part of a person, your character, your feelings. Don't let all the stuff that is going to go on. Don't let it get into your heart and trouble you to where you don't believe. Many times we go through situations and it don't seem like what it's going to turn out like. Oh, well, maybe everybody, maybe everybody done been through a field of roses and 
pedicles, but, but I've been through some situations where it looked like what it didn't, what it was in the end turned out something different. And I, I found myself letting trouble into my heart and I had to find my way back to the word of God. No matter what you're going through, there is something inside of this word that will fit your situation that will fit the circumstances. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. So whatever we're going through and when we get in his word and the, when the spirit come in and gives his presence, then the comfort sets in and the trouble goes away. Verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare, uh, let, let's stop right there. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. Jesus is incapable of telling a lie. So if he said that there is a place that is set up for us individually in his father's house, because this word, it pertains to us the same way it pertained to the disciples as he was speaking it to them. There's a home and there's a place for us. So we have to understand that Jesus is incapable of telling the lie. So if he is saying that there is a prepared place for us in his father's house and in his father's house is not of this world it's of heaven so he wasn't speaking of the things of, that we have of this world it's great of the home that we live in here but it doesn't hold it doesn't hold nothing to our heavenly home so you know many times we so worried about what's going on down here and how we look down here but I've heard, you know, in, 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 in what, growing up that this is the getting ready room down here. We got to go to heaven from down here. We living like hell down here and then thinking we gonna go to heaven living like hell down here. That doesn't work that way. God has prepared a place for you in his father's home. So in order to be in that prepared place, we gotta live a prepared life. Amen, amen, amen. And if God, verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, if God goes and prepare a place for us, that is a prepared place for us, it is not beneficial to us to waste that. It's there. It's up to us to make it to that place. Amen. Because he says, if I prepare that place to you, my intentions are, or to come back for you. You know, I I think it will be the world's worst and my suppers will be very scarce if my wife go in the kitchen and cook her heart out, put it on the table, and I just walk away from it. Well, I'm gonna lose some weight. Hey, y'all want? Hey, Amen. You won't see me no more. <laughs> Ain't much of me now. She stopped cooking, it's over. That's how God would feel if our life down here didn't get us to heaven. Think about that. Us not taking the time and living a life that is pleasing to God to get to where he has prepared for us he took the time to prepare that place for you somebody took the time to prepare a meal for you and knowing that you need that nourishment in your body you would not eat it knowing that your soul needs an eternal home and he has prepared it for you you wouldn't take advantage of it I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come. He's promising that I will come. You just got to be ready. We just got to be ready. 
and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. On the right hand of the Father. He's prepared a place for us in heaven. Verse 5. Verse 5, excuse me. There it goes. Verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we, and how can we know the way? You know, I'm pretty sure Jesus probably had got a little bit frustrated by the end. After you don't walk with me, after you don't see me heal the blind man's eyes, after you don't see me raise, you just seen me raise Lazarus from the dead. How can, how can you not believe? And with everything that we are being faced with on a day-to-day -day basis, the things that we see in the news, the things that we hear just talk with friends, the things that we are able to see with our spiritual eyes. How, even with the disciples, after you seeing Jesus do all that stuff, you say, how can I get there? Knowing that he is the way. So seeing all this stuff and not feeling that there is a need for Jesus to come in and, 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 and heal and help all of our families and all of our environments and, and our youth and all that. How can, how can we as Christians sit knowing that Jesus will do those things? We can't continue to sit on a stool of do nothing and do nothing about it. You know, so Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not the whither, whither there goest, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Desi, will you play me something softly? It was not Jesus' intentions or design for Jesus to stay in this world forever. So what we have to understand that it is not designed for us to stay here forever. Whether we want to admit it whether we want to realize it, we will not live forever. Our soul needs a resting place. And Jesus has already, Kim, Jesus has already told us that I came here to die for the sins of man and I go to prepare a place for us. And he even made it so clear to us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come to the Father except by me. So we got to acknowledge that Jesus is the way. We got to go and tell our brothers and sisters that Jesus is the way. We got to go and tell and show in our work environments that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to the prepared place that he has for us in his father's house. Your mansion is our mansion is in heaven. Jesus has already prepared a final resting place for us. It's up to us in this sanctuary, out there on Facebook, wherever you may be. It's up to us to accept 
what Jesus came to earth for. As we stand to our feet, the invitation is extended. Jesus came, stand to your feet. Jesus came to this earth, born of a Virgin Mary, lived a sinless life in order to die on the cross for our sins, was put to death, buried in a tomb, laid there for three days, but rose with all power resting in his hand. See the thing, if he would not have rested and ascended back to the Father, he wouldn't have been able to prepare us a place. So we glorify God for raising his son Jesus from the dead. So we understand because of the adoption into the family, we can rise. No matter what we've done, no matter how far we've gotten away from God, we can rise. Accept what Jesus Christ has done for us in our life because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, no man. Go it to the Father, except by him. You got to have Jesus in your life as your Savior, you got to have him as your Lord. You got to worship him. You got to praise his holy and righteous name. The invitation is extended into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. be a member of the family. But there may be some areas in your life that you need prayer and you would like to come and agree, have someone agree with you. Would you now come?
used to be. Yeah. I thank God he changed me. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah, Lord. I'm thank you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not all I'm going to be. Yeah. I got to say, but I'm not what I used to be. Yeah. God has changed me and yeah. rearranged me. social media world, Desi, keep going, and you feel that you are outside of the ark of safety, pray this prayer with us, Lord God, we thank you for life that you have given us, we acknowledge that we have sinned, and we have come short of your glory, and in living this sinful life, Lord God, we understand that we need a savior. And we understand that you came born of a virgin Mary, lived a sinless life, and died on the cross for our sins because we were not able to carry that weight. Lord God, you were buried in a borrowed tomb, and you rose with all power in your hand. Going back to the Father interceding on our behalf. God, we thank you. We pray that you come into our hearts, change our lives, that we shall never be the same. We glorify you and we love you. We make you Lord of our lives. If you have prayed this prayer, we believe that the confession of your faith you are saved. We pray that you get in a good, God-led, Bible-based, spirit-filled church that is preaching, teaching, living, worshiping God's true and unadulterated word. We thank you. We thank you. I pray as something has been said, you may be seated. We pray that something has been said that has touched your heart, motivating you, understanding that you and you, Miss Jackie, you, Kim, you, Slappy, you, JD, you. Something couple, you, Nikki, you, Percy, you, Shara, you, Sister Stella, you. There is a prepared place. Thank you. Amen. That Jesus himself and God, all, they prepared a place for us. Because we understand that this world is not our home. And we are spiritual beings in a human body. The heavenly home that is prepared for us. We thank you all for your love and your support. I thank you for your amens. I thank you for amen. I, I know I mess up sometimes and I'm finna call this cat going back up here. I know I get nervous sometimes and I have to calm myself down, but I'm grateful to God that he's put me in a, in a fellowship of people that love you through your faults. 
your flaws, your shortcomings, and only wants the best for you. I pray God continue to bless you as he has blessed me at this time. I will turn it back over to Sister Kathy. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Lord, for the word today, amen. There's a prepared place for us, amen. And Jesus is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We thank God for that. Once again, we beat the record, Pastor T. <laughs> Getting out of church <laughs> 12. Amen. Get these ministers up here. We're going to get you on through it. Amen. Um, we just thank Pastor T for allowing the ministers to come before you all on fifth Sunday. We thank God for that opportunity um, because you do have to stay in practice, amen, of, of this word and reading the word and just, you know, trying to deliver a word, amen. And I know how it is, like, a lot of you may think, you know, or may be called, you know, to minister or to preach. And then you got this word that you done studied and I got to preach this word. And after you preach that word and you got another word, you preach that word and then you get to a point where, oh, what? I got to preach. What? what I'm going to preach? What? 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 I got that. Lord, I've been up all night. I can't find a word. So then you really find out, you know, what your calling is when you get that word out. Because I'm sure all of us have a word or two, amen, that we can preach. But as preachers, when you have to do it over and over and over again, you really have to be sure about your calling. Amen. So we just thank God for our pastor for giving us that opportunity to exercise our gifts here at Union Springs. Amen. We thank God for everything that we heard today. We want to remind you of Youth Week that's coming up first Sunday. Um, also want to remind you of Youth Week. If you have not signed your children up, make sure you do it today. Today is the last day. If you have not turned in your scholarship um, form, and your information. You need to make sure you get it turned in to me today, and this is a church scholarship. Um, I think Sister Tony's scholarship was already was last Sunday. So um, make sure you get your information turned in to the church today. See me. Um, you can see Sister Maddie, Sister Sheila, or Sister Allison back here and give us your information. And once again, we've said this before, there are scholarships out there for our um, seniors, and um, if you like, if you just fill the information out, you'll get you'll you'll get the scholarship. Um, it's it's waiting for you to you know put your name on a write your essay, and and get this money. So um, we gotta learn to just not be lazy when it comes to filling out this information. Now, youth, you're getting ready to go out into to the world, or you're getting ready to go to college or whatnot. You can't be lazy. You go, you're going to have to stop depending on your mama and your daddy to keep telling you over and over again to get it. And I know, I know how it is because I have a daughter who, who you know, has gone through this and had to fill out scholarship papers and, you know, getting ready for grad school now and need to fill these applications out to get into school. You got to meet these deadlines and you just got to fill the applications out. So please, it's money out there for you get it. Get all you can and make sure you go as far as you can um, before you go out into the world to, to get ready to work because it's a lot of time for you to work. So just, you know, it's a lot of time to work. A lot. So just, you know, enjoy your life, your college time and all of this time. Go through it and don't try to, you know, go through it so fast um, because you know, once you do it, um, that time has passed you on. And you can, I'm not saying you can't go back to college, um, at a certain age, but let me tell you this little, little joke right quick. Okay, so I had gone to college, and I would go, and I would stop, and I start back, and I would stop, and I go back. So this is about being old trying to go to college, okay? So this is the joke in this. So one day, I had this young lady to tell me, she said, well, Sister Kathy, since you're, well, well Kathy, since you're commuting, back and forth to college every day. Um, she said, you can come in my room and just kind of hang out in my room until it's time for you to um, go to class. Because I had like a long break in between. So this particular day, 
she was on the telephone talking to some friends on campus or this guy on campus. So evidently, the guy was talking about me and wanted her to, to say something to me to, so, you know, that I could talk to him or whatever. So she was talking on the phone and she got real low because she thought I was asleep because I was up in the top bunk and she was down just talking on the phone, but then it got real low. And then she said, she old. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, get it before you get too old to be on campus. I mean, I, I guess I was about 27 or 28, and I thought, think to myself, Lord, am I old? Am I old? <laughs> So I told Johnny about it. So every time we get a situation where it's like, you too old to do this, he'll look at me and say, you old. <laughs> so get all you can before you get too old, young people. Amen. Come on and stand on your feet, and then we're going to dismiss. Oh, okay, don't. She just, um, Sister Sherry came up for prayer, and when I asked her what she wanted me to pray for, she had um, said that she was in a lot of pain. So doing here, doing intercessory prayer, God had showed me something, and I didn't understand what God was showing me, but he showed me where two joints was rubbing together, bone on bone. And when I prayed for her, that's exactly what she said, but in intercessory prayer, God told me that bone on bone means there is no cushion in between the bones, and God said that he is the cushion in between the bones, and that's what I um, shared with her in prayer, but she just wanted prayer. Amen. 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 Thank God for our intercessors. Amen. 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 Staying on the wall. See, intercessors don't only pray for you, but they get a word for you. Amen. Amen. So, and they confirm some things for you. So, if the Lord said it, believe it. Amen. 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 Miss A, do you have a report for us? Okay. All right. Okay, so we will dismiss at this time. Okay. Father, we just thank you for our service on today. Lord, we thank you for how you have moved in this place, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We even thank you for your sweet, sweet spirit that you have allowed to rest in this place on this morning, God. We thank you for each and every person and family that's represented here, God. We thank you for even the church members that are not here, God. We pray that you would just touch them, God, and help them to just not um, get comfortable, God, with sitting at home, God, but help them to realize that they, they, they are missed in the fellowship and that they need to come back to the fellowship, God. And we pray that all is well with them. Lord, we thank you for what our ears have heard, and we pray that we will keep it, God. We know that you have prepared a place for us, God, so help us to live like prepared people so that we can be ready for this place. And, Father, we just thank you for everything. Now, we ask that you will let the love of God and the grace of Jesus and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit let it rest, rule, and abide in the hearts and the minds of all of God's people until we meet again. And everyone sing. Oh.